Okay, so now we're going to have a go at running through our first R script. So if you look at the worksheet, you'll see there's an R script actually in the worksheet itself. Okay, so what we need to do is basically, uh, we're going to do this very simply, we're going to copy this script from the worksheet and put it into R Studio itself. And this is really just to get you a chance to sort of make sure your R and R Studio setup are working okay, uh, and just to get you to run through some code that'll hopefully produce something that will look quite impressive to you. So we're going to be using the uh, global UFO sightings data set to do this. So we've got the script here. So we'll need to go into our studio, first of all. So just want to uh, remind you of a couple of things to do if this is the first time you've used our studio. Um, depending what version you're using, um, we want to set up those kind of global preferences, those global options. Uh, on my machine, I can get them via tools. On a Mac, it's under preferences. We'll go into global options. So we're basically saying that we don't want to restore the R data uh, workspace at startup, and we never want to save it. Okay, so make sure you uncheck that and click never for there. I'm using the default appearance in R. Uh, you can change the theme to whatever you like. So this is the default one, TextMate. This is one I sometimes use for uh, you know my own work. Uh, you can just do whatever you want, basically. Find one that works well for you. I'm going to choose this one simply because I think it works quite well um, in the context of these recorded sessions. I've also set up a 80-character um, margin, which will become visible to you when you kind of see the uh, script window open up. So that's just to kind of get things set up. And once these are set up, you don't have to touch them again, by the way. So if this is the first time you're using our Studio desktop, uh, you can just do it, um, you know, just do it the once, basically. Don't have to worry again. So if you recall, um, I suggest that it's a really good way to, uh, you know, use the R proj um, folder structure as well of capturing the structure of your um, different analyses in R. So what we're going to do, we're going to start a new project. Uh, we're going to create a new directory. Um, so I don't, I don't have a, you know, folder already associated with what I'm interested in using. So we're going to create a new directory, new project. Um, so we're going to call it, um, I don't know, my first R script, something like that. Um, it's going to want to know what subdirectory it is uh, in. So I've got a folder on my machine just called R work. So I'm going to use that. So it's going to create my first R script as a subdirectory of R work. So I'm going to create my project. And what you'll see when I click on create project is kind of the R session restarting. Okay, so now we're in, if you look up here, now we're in the R work folder. And within that folder, we're in another folder called my first R script. And within that folder, we've got our little .rproj icon. So if we ever wanted to reopen this script again, the script that I'm about to write, we would simply click or double click on this file here. And we would open up our studio desktop all within the context of this folder and within the context of this script. Okay, so this is our console window. We typically use the console window just for typing commands, kind of one-off commands. So what we really want to be doing is writing a script. So I'm going to go up here to file, new file, our script, and it's giving me a new window for us writing, or in this case, pasting in our script. And if you notice, at the 80 character mark, this little margin has appeared. So when I'm typing my code, I might make sure then that my code doesn't extend beyond this limit. Uh, I certainly don't want to go all the way over here and me having to scroll to view it. Um, so when your code gets to about here, you just press return, continue your code on the next line, and R will deal with that automatically. So as this is the first time we've really done anything in R, we're not going to sort of um, do any coding ourselves. Uh, we're going to basically do nothing more than copy this script from the worksheet into our scripting window in our studio. Okay, so we're going to copy this, we're going to paste it in over here. Oops, I'm not going to paste it in there, I'm going to paste it into the script. Okay, so the script is now here. If this is the first time the uh, using our studio, 
Um, we're going to try and run these packages here, but you'll need to install them on your machines first of all. So the way to install packages is to go down to the console. If you start, start typing install.packages, you get to see a t an autocomplete. That knows that it's kind of one of two commands you're asking for. It's correctly guessed that install.packages will, will be the one we're using. So if you don't want to type out the whole thing, if you just press tab and it'll actually complete it. So the first package we might want to install is tidyverse. So you'll type it like that, and then you'll just press return. You'll do the same for the GG repel and the patchwork packages. So you'll just do the installation down here. On my machine, I don't need to do this bit because the packages are already installed. So you only need to install packages once on your machine, uh, and you don't need to reinstall them unless the package has been updated and you want to update it. So we've got our script up here. It's currently called untitled1, so that's not very helpful. So let's save it. You're going to save it as a script. And you'll see automatically it's taken us to the folder where our .r proj file is. So I'm going to call the script itself, uh, just my script, something like that. Press return. And you'll see down here that we now have the script saved in our my first R script folder. So, so everything's kind of being saved within here. So we've got our script. We can run it in different ways. We can run it line by line by pressing either control return or command return. And that'll run it line by line. So that's run line one, loading the tidyverse, loading gg repel, loading patchwork. Now the next thing we want to do is read in our data. So we can just um, do con command return or control return and I'll read in the data on line six. So it's getting it from GitHub. Okay, so it's read it in. So it's mapped our data file onto this variable called UFO sightings. So if we wanted to, we could simply type view UFO sightings, press return. And what that will do, so it's a pretty big file, it's about 13 megabytes. What that will do is load and display the data file. So over 80,000 rows, 11 columns in this new window up here. So if we wanted to, we could just look at the data file itself just to make sure it's kind of as we're expecting it to be. We'll come on to other things we can do um, to inspect the data file when we read it in uh, in the next couple of workshops. Okay. So don't worry too much about the detail that's going on here. We're going to cover a lot of this in the data wrangling and in the data visualization workshops. The purpose of today is simply to get you to run some code and hopefully have something that looks nice as a result of that. So this is actually um, one instruction effectively, but over multiple lines. So we can just press control return or command return and it'll run that code. Next chunk of code uh, is associated with working out the top 10 states with the most UFO sightings. We're actually going to use that information a little later. We're going to work out the, um, the states within particular latitude and longitude limits because um, we're actually going to do a plot of where UFO sightings are using the latitude and longitude coordinates. So we're going to run that chunk of code. We're going to run the next chunk, which is actually going to plot all sightings uh, of UFOs on a map of the US uh, with the top 10 states colored. And then we're going to do another plot of the top 10 UFO shapes spotted in California. Okay. So now what we're going to do is put all of these plots together. Again, don't worry too much about the logic here. So we've run that. So we've put the plots together and we've mapped them onto a variable called my plot. So if we wanted to, down here, we could just simply type the variable name my plot, and we'll look over here on the right. Just take a wee second for it to come up. Let's uh, look at that. So we're going to zoom in a bit. And what we have here are the three plots that we just created. We've got the top 10 states for UFO sightings. This is a, these are the state abbreviations. We've got the top 10 just make it a little wider. Top 10 UFO shapes spotted in California. And then we've got, done this like this. And then we've got a slightly 
out of perspective a map of the US. So we can do it like that. We can also save our image using the GG save function. So if we just run that, that's going to save the uh, image that we just created. It's going to save it as UFO underscore plot. So if we now click on our files button here, we see we've now got a JPEG image saved. So if we just click on that, let's see what happens. There you go. Fantastic. We've got rendered in really high definition with the appropriate um, sort of uh, sort of aspect ratio, those three plots, top 10 states for UFO sightings, top 10 UFO shapes spotted in California, and then down here, the sites of all those UFO spottings, um, sightings within the US. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, that wasn't actually a huge amount of code used to generate that. Um, this is just a nice demonstration of the fact that as well as R being, as being fantastic for reproducible data science, it's also fantastic uh, for building these really nice visualizations. So you'll see up here, because we made one or two changes, uh, my script has got this little, um, uh, it's now written in red, that's to indicate we haven't saved it. So let's just save it, but by pressing Control S or Command S, it's now saved, it's saved down here. And there you go, that's basically your first R script. Mm -hmm.